Talk Show. Recorded live. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the University of Acadia Talk Show Call with Franco Collins tonight. Tonight being the uh, let's see, thirteenth day of April, and uh, over here in the state, fourteenth day for Frank and uh, 2011. Welcome, everyone. Uh, we will do as uh, Frank suggested. He has a few things to cover during the first hour. Then we'll enter the question and answer session. And with those on the phone lines, if you will star eight, that will put you in the question and answer queue. And those that are on the chat, if you will type question in all uppercase and then type out the question, we will get to those questions as well. And we thank you, everyone, for your patience. And uh, like Frank said, there may be a little bit of noise in the background, and hopefully uh, we can uh, get through everything. I'm um, here, Frank. Okay. And Frank, if we have trouble hearing you, I'll let you know. That's all right. Okay, great. All right. So I'll turn it over to you and take it away. Thanks very much, Terry. Welcome, everyone, who are able to be on the call tonight. Thanks again for coming and listening. And I also extend out a, a hello to those that don't and are not able to get on the call tonight, but do download the call from TalkShoe or download it from University of Acadia over at http university.acadia.info. Well, tonight, um, I, I think given there has been some fantastic research in the last week, given people are still facing major legal issues, that there has been mixed responses and given continued changes in what's happening in the global landscape, I suggested and Terry agreed tonight that we focus this call really on legal matters, on where we're at, on how we can best achieve success when we are confronted with court and legal matters. How is it the system is still possibly getting away with ignoring what is happening? What are we doing about it? And what does this hold for the future? So I've really divided it into four topics that I want to cover in the hour that we've got. The first is the topic of doubt and, and the great spiritual war. If, if anyone does not believe that we are in a spiritual war, uh, that we are dealing uh, with an awakening of knowledge and we're dealing with people entrenched in ignorance, then that is an essential issue. So the first is doubt and the great spiritual war. The second is who and what you really are. And as we go through some of the research again tonight, I'm going to emphasize and show, hopefully, to you just how important that is, not only from the perspective of Eucadia, but actually, in fact, from the perspective of what little remedy exists in their system, who and what you really are, knowing that. The third is the true nature of the court and their power, which is really an update in the research, and also a bit of a summary of what we've discussed in the last few weeks to try and get a handle on this because I, I am aware that a lot of the information we talk about for many may appear new. It is hard sometimes to get a perspective. So the, number three, the true nature of the court and their power. And then rounding off, how to conduct yourself, knowing all the facts, and how we can improve the likelihood of success when we are dealing with court matters. So let's start with number one, doubt and the Great Spiritual War. Well, we find ourselves at a moment in history of extreme, extreme change. As we have said on previous chats, and I'm sure many of you know, all the major prophecies, more than at any other point in history, point to this moment this time as a watershed, the end of one system, the beginning of a new. And if ever we needed confirmation that we're witnessing the end of one system and the beginning of the new, 
It is the daily events that describe the fragmentation and potentially very soon the collapse of an existing system. One of the questions, though, we always have, is this, is this a deliberate plan for something to replace it? Or are we truly witnessing uh, the end of a system of extraordinary oppression right throughout the world and waste and abuse? So amidst all that, clearly there are signs of a spiritual war. There are signs with the extremes, even in the last week of hearing about serial murderers in New York, that there's the extremes that we deal with every day in terms of pornography, of, of child molestation, of rampant corruption, of the breakdown of the family unit, of the isolation of the community, of people just totally ignoring their own law, of the collapse of law. But I want to make something very clear, and I hope this is something that we can um, keep in our mind, is that because of the covenant of one heaven, and I hope all of you have had a chance to read it, I know it's a long document, and there are many documents on Eucadia, and there are many documents on one-heaven.org, that's one-heaven.org, but the covenant is a critical document. Because of the covenant of one heaven, and because of the concept that we forgive ourselves and we forgive each other, so that the unending chain of an eye for an eye of evil perpetuating evil, of anger perpetuating anger, that that has been broken, the war is over. We're only dealing with the kinds of battles that one expects when there are pockets of resistance, where there are isolated groups that still don't realise that the war is over. Well, the war is over because spiritually there is no more war. This is a, a premise and a belief and an understanding that underpins Eucadia and membership of One Heaven. Now, why is this important? If you go to one-heaven.org, and you have a look at the covenant. There is a document some of you may not have seen before, but it is the beginning document of the covenant. It's called Exordium. So you go to the index of the covenant and you open up and you look at the document Exordium. And what that document shows you is that all the claims of the existing system, which are claims spiritually first, and temporally second, have now been fulfilled and now been passed over. Their power is and has always been that they claim to be the representatives of the divine. That is the central tenant of their power. That is the heart of the beast. They claim to be the representatives of the divine. Well, according to the covenant, because of the covenant and because of the fulfillment of the end of the war, their roles have been dissolved. We no longer need guardians anymore. Why? Because we have grown up. We have awakened. We are no longer behaving as children. We are behaving as apostles. Apostles in the true sense. The word meaning divine messengers, not simply those that followed the master, Yeshua. As we have now uh, grown up and as we start to pronounce and behave as grown-ups, as messengers, as, as lay ministers into their system, we will be increasingly shown that they have no authority. They have no right to continue the way that they have. So have a look at Exordium because it makes it clear 
It makes it clear that this is a watershed. This is the point that the war is over because the covenant fulfills their system. It is an inclusive document. It does not favour Christian or Muslim or Hindu or Jew. It does not favour people who have white skin or black skin. It does not favour people living in Asia or America. It does not curse those that continue to do horrible things, nor does it favour those that have been there from the beginning and, and believe the truth of this. It is an embracement that until we forgive ourselves, we cannot end this cycle of madness. And because we have forgiven ourselves, because we have taken the talents given to us and recognised that until we made this change in our attitude, nothing was going to change in the world. Because we've done that, the war is over. Now, many will not believe that. That's their choice. But it doesn't change the fact that the idea itself is enough to perpetuate that because it's spiritual. You don't need... The, 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 the covenant is its own proof. The fact that it exists means that the idea exists. If the idea exists, then that's all that is needed to prove at this point. And he's seeing the change. You're seeing the change in attitude and the waking up of people. So the war is over. But now we have the hard task ahead of working out who and what we are, of mopping up those that are still resistant to those facts and of seeing the world change given that this is this new idea. So who and what we are, why is this so important if we're talking about legal? Well, when you walk into the court, frequently we say the word I. Who are you, your name? We talk ourselves, we are an individual or we are a human. Without realising that one of the tricks of these sorcerers, of these magicians, is that they claim that you are separated. In their model, in their perverse model of the universe, they believe that they can sever by spell your soul from your mind, from your body. They see them as separate and they view those things through the prism of a trinity, mind, body, spirit. So knowing who and what you are is crucial because when you go into court, how you handle yourself, whether you choose to use the word we or I, denotes to them that you know exactly who and what you are and that no one in that court can continue the pretense that you are separate. Now, to this end of who and what you are, everything on Eucadia, everything on One Heaven, seeks to express a simple fact. You are immortal. You're immortal. You are part of the divine and therefore are the divine, expressed in trust to the living flesh. You are not simply part of the universe. You are an instance of the universe. You are the personification of the universe and everything and more. You are the unique collective awareness. You are the expression of the unique collective awareness. You are Eucadia. The expression of intent, symbols, thought, meaning of unique collective awareness. Now, the detail of this is expressed in Eucadia.com. It's expressed in the ideas that are presented throughout the covenant. And it is particularly expressed when we talk about the ecclesiastical deed poll. Now, why is this important? 